Many years ago, I was asked the question of whether or not I have watched any Japanese anime, outside of Pokemon, Sailor Moon, and the like. And if so, what was my first one? And the answer to that is Magic Knight Ray Earth, a series that I particularly enjoy even when rewatching it recently. The main reason that I like it is because of its simplicity. It is an easy series to get into with a relatively simple plot that isn't really complicated. And if you're looking for Stepping Stone, this is one avenue I personally recommend, especially if you want to go back a couple of decades and not do anything recent. Magic Knight Ray Earth was also a rather popular series for its time, with a bunch of video games behind it, and the traditional JRPG that was on the Super Nintendo was one of the games responsible for me being introduced to emulation, along with its fan translation patch, which means I was able to play it in English. So with my own little series I'm going to be doing for the next little while, I will be discussing this particular game. However, it is not going to be my main focus. You see, most of the Magic Knight Ray Earth games never made it outside of Japan, and could not be played without fan translation patches. Except for one in particular. And this little gem found its home on a little console known as the Sega Saturn. Hello everyone, I'm O'Reilly, and welcome to Let's Play Magic Knight Ray Earth. This land, this place, the dark tide must be quelled. I must call them. And so we are immediately thrust into the game in a little opening section, actually, just to get accustomed to, well, the controls. If you're not sure where we are, we're actually in Tokyo Tower, because apparently we are part of a school field trip. And apparently a bunch of other schools are also, hey, are also apparently here as well, and we'll be seeing them shortly. This man is certainly uptight, I will say that. But of course, he's security and a clerk, you say? Hmm. Well, what's her side of the story? No, I'm, I'm gonna pretend that I ignored that. It's just what you have to do. Sometimes it happens in terms of tourism and entertainment, part-time jobs. And also that is a very good reason. Something that our wonderful security guard probably doesn't really know how to handle all that well. So in terms of this opening area, all you're really able to do is just kind of walk around Tokyo Tower, the first couple floors anyways, and look around, talk to people, and just kind of soak in what this game is going to have to offer in terms of interaction. In order to talk to people, you have to get up to close to them and then press the A button on the controller. Of course, tourism, there's got to be souvenirs everywhere. It's interesting to note that with the Tokyo Tower segment for the beginning of the game, it's relatively, should I say, unique? There's a bunch of Magic Knight Ray Earth games. Six in total, I believe? However, I believe it's only this game that has this opening segment to it. And oh my... wow, man. Way to bring down the tone a bit. There's a lot of just strange dialogue with this one portion, so we're going to be taking our time in order to look around and see what everybody else has to say. Because, man, they put a lot of detail into this one section, even though it has no bearing on the rest of the game at all. And that's something I really am impressed by and want to show off in detail. 
will be going up shortly. I want to see what's over here. Hmm. Okay. Also, if you're unfamiliar with the show, this is actually how the show begins with the field trip to the Tokyo Tower. Which is really cool. In fact, we actually don't even know the girl that we're controlling right now. We don't even know her name. Speak the devil. Except it's in the form of a question, but I hazard a guess to say that yes, the girl that we're playing, her name is Hikaru. There's also a lot of things to examine. Pretty much the only way you're going to be figuring out how to examine things is if you pretty much mash your face into the wall or to the objects, and then press the A button. Alright, let's check upstairs and see what's going on. Old man, you are wigging out. I'll get to him eventually. And she's that kind of girl, okay. Okay, what old man, what do you have to say? Bloomin' video games! Okay, what in the old days have you really? Rocks and, <laughs> rocks and sticks and mud all day. <laughs> oh, goody, goody. In terms of the bunch of dialogue that you're gonna be seeing here, um, some of it is really close to home. Like, this is some things that you'd be really seeing in real life, which is kind of creepy, except, uh, including this wax dubby. Oh my god. Why do you have that? Why is it next to you? Are you understaffed? <laughs> in any case. Unfortunately, you're finding out with this trip that there's not a lot of things we're able to do. Which is weird, because, like, if you're on a field trip, there's usually something that goes with it. In terms of, like, personal experience, field trips have never been, well, a vacation. Even with, like, skating trips, it's usually had something to do. Lady? Hello? Come on. Lady? Thank you. I'm gonna get by. There's an air hockey table. But field trips usually had something academic tied to it, whether it was, like, a small science assignment, or even with skating, it was tied to my physical education grade in some way, shape, or form. Just so teachers, I guess, wasn't feeling like it was a waste of time. I can't see... no, I can't get past this guy. In terms of these old arcade cabinets... Well... Yeah, old video games. Keep in mind that this particular game was made in 1995 and then was ported to North America three years later, in 1998. So, in terms of this being on a Sega console, what old video games could those arcade cabinets have? Hmm. Oh, we're also broke. I guess we don't have any... yeah, we have zero... rubies? But I don't want to get taken? Okay, that that's not really worded correctly, because that means that... I don't think you think what that mean. I don't think you mean what I think it means. I guess I guess she mean she's meaning... Taken in? I think that would be more... Fitting. Tacorama. <laughs> Good. Tokyo Recycles. So many shows. I just want to see a show. Can I do that? Mysterious Journey. Well, if anything, Nakaro seems to be a girl who is really open to adventure. Hi! What's up? Oh, we're not supposed to be down here? If not, where are we? Hey, whoop. Oh, hey, I, I want to moon... Yes, I can moonwalk. What kind of strange corner is this? Okay. I... I yeah. Okay, I'm done.
to examine it, obviously. It's weird that they also reference Harry Hamlin, because, um, well, I actually even had to look him up. He actually played Perseus in the old Clash of the Titans movie in 1981, and in terms of People Magazine, he was named Sexiest Man Alive in 1987. So I guess it would make sense. But that's enough for the two first floors, so we can go up to the observation deck. But before we do that, let's check out the menu. Pressing the start button opens this up. There's a couple of cool things you're able to do in here, other than, you know, examining your items and whatnot, which we do not have any of. You can save your game, change your settings, like so. It's not really noteworthy, but review trip memories is actually an interesting thing. Hikaru keeps a diary, and it's even voice acted. My school went to the Tokyo Tower today on a field trip. The observation deck was so high, and everything below looked so tiny. Is it corny that I was excited about going there? Throughout the course of the game, Hikaru is going to be having diary entries. So I will hopefully be showing those off at appropriate times as we go through. They're really cool in terms of like having this game be like more voice acted than I thought it was actually going to be. But now we're on the observation deck, which is apparently where we are supposed to be. I don't agree. Tokyo Tower, a lot of things happen at Tokyo Tower. Usually the end of the world. <laughs> that better not happen here. Because that would be bad. And that's usually the case with living in, like, a big city. You don't have, like, a tourist mindset where you have to see, like, the big structures and the famous places. Because, like, you live nearby, you can do that at any time. And then you don't. Lame. You're gonna be lame and unhip. Terminally unhip. And so many things that are said up here are kind of relevant still, like viewfinders. If you don't have to pay for it and it's free, usually the viewfinder is kind of crap. If you do have to pay for it, it's usually an arm and a leg for a quick peep, but it's a good sight because they keep it clean. Well, it would be if I could see it. Fortunately, I can't. There's just the blurry down below I can see off of the edge. Now, even up here, we are actually able to see a bunch of different colors. Specifically, green dresses. And there was also blue on the left side. Well, good for you for exercising. A really good thing to see. What are you doing? You're pacing. Oh. Um, okay. Watch it falls over. Who are you? Oh. Okay, well, they're lined up in three... Yeah, I'm absolutely gonna die. Yeah, it's the three... It's the gang. It's the gang of girls. Don't mess with them. Hmm. Now we get him to the other schools. We think we're older. That was actually one thing Hikaru pointed out, which was the coin flattening machine. Which is really a cool thing in terms of tourism. And this... And this lady is getting gonna get existential, so I'm gonna carry on with my coin flattening thing, because that's more interesting. You see, I... Cur like, currently in Canada, we have phased out the penny, and usually it's a penny that you put in and you flatten it for a specific landmark that you've missed... that you have visited. I want- I'm kind of wonder what's going to happen to all those things. Because I don't think they're going to be able to accept nickels, because that's... unfortunate. Farewell, Penny. I'll miss you. Now we have to round everything up or down. Uh, 
Oh, you must be from the private- yep, you're from the private school, blue dress and everything. And I- uh, come on, can I- can I talk to you? Thank you! You're so very high! You might as well meet the existential girl down below. And it's nice to see a little area like this. Just kind of up here. And in a bunch of different places, really. Which leaves you two. I think I've literally talked to everybody in this cotton plague place, so now we only have these two people left, who look specifically unique. I have an important fencing match tomorrow, and we're wasting time here. <sighs> yes, what exactly are we here for a field trip for? Because again, there should be a purpose. Oh my, you look lost. Can I help you? Um, yeah, I'm wondering where the next part of the game actually starts, because, well, there's not much left to do. Flash? What are you doing here? I is something wrong? This cute little mud is my very naughty dog. I have to catch him before he causes any trouble. Wait! I'll help you! Oh, what a darling little puppy. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's gotten into him. that the magic knights have been summoned from beyond the barrier. And so, the legend becomes an embarrassing reality. What can they hope to accomplish using these children? Even if they manage to release Emerald, their power is too limited to be of consequence. Quite true, my liege. Of course. We must watch them closely to minimize any chance for surprises. As you wish. See you next time, everyone, as we crack open another version of the game, and hopefully nothing else cracks open in terms of our three girls.